Hello, it's the seventh grade. Uh, we are going to start on chapter 27, the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. I'm here in your classroom and there's your classroom. There's your lockers. I know you guys miss it. All right, so let's get started. So number one, what is the sacrament? This is obviously a review question, but I wanna make sure that we start it off with the definition of sacrament. If you remember, it is an outward sign instituted by Christ to give grace. The outward sign of the sacrament of the anointing is going to be the oil instituted by Christ. These sacraments are given to us by Jesus. And the purpose of all of the sacraments is to give us grace. Okay, so let's move on from there. Um, number two, the anointing of the sick is sometimes called what? It's sometimes called the last rite. So you've maybe heard um, somebody talking about giving the last rites. Now, this does not mean that someone's necessarily dying. Um, they can be, but that's not necessarily the case. Okay. So number three, what is the main purpose of the anointing of the sick? All right, you're, you're going to write two main purposes. The first one is uh, to prepare a person for a possible death. So if somebody is dying, uh, you definitely want to get this sacrament. I'll, I'm going to go into that in a little bit. So the main purpose is to prepare a person for a holy death. Uh, and the second one is to strengthen him or her in their suffering. So it might not be that they're, um, that they're necessarily dying. You don't necessarily need to be dying to receive the sacrament. Okay. So, uh, you just have to be sick and, um, it has to be a diagnosis that, um, is terminal, but they're not necessarily on their deathbed. Okay. That it doesn't necessarily look good. Like somebody's, you know, has brain cancer or something like that. Um, they can definitely get the anointing of the sick, even if they're, you know, walking around still and all that. Okay. So, um, moving on. Um, so what does the sacrament do? This is a little bit of a long answer. Um, so I could hear you guys saying, wait, slow down. Um, this answer is in the back of the book. I'm going to tell you, so you can either, um, pause this as I go through and just write it down, or you can just look it up in the back of the book or the back of the chapter, chapter 27. Okay. So, um, what does this sacrament do? There are, um, I didn't give you a whole lot of space here for number four, but there are four things, okay? Number one, it increases sanctifying grace in us. Um, number two, it gives spiritual strength uh, to uh, die a holy death and to resist temptation. Number three, it takes away venial and mortal sins um, if a person is unable to confess them, okay, um, but has sorrow for them. So if they, um, you know, they can't talk or whatever, but they have sorrow for their sins and they have a mortal sin on their soul, um, then that uh, mortal sin is actually forgiven through this sacrament. And uh, the fourth one is it has the potential to heal a person physically, um, just as Jesus healed uh, many people in the Gospels. The sacrament of the anointing of the sick has the potential to heal them physically. Now, does that always happen? No, it doesn't always happen. Why? I think I put that as the next one, did I? Uh, yes, good. So number five, why would it not heal? Why will it not be God's will to heal the person physically? It just might not be God's will. So um, two main reasons why uh, the sacrament of the anointing of the sick would not heal someone physically Um would not be God's will. And the first one is it's just their time to go. Um, it's just their time to uh, meet their eternal reward, hopefully. Um, and the second reason would be because there is a lot of value, redemptive value in redemptive suffering, meaning that this could be someone's purgatory time. Um, that I remember my mom died of cancer and she was very sick and in a lot of pain for the last three months before she died. And we, and she believed, and we all believed that it was her purgatory time that she was suffering on earth. And all the saints will talk about that. It's much better to suffer here on earth than it is to uh, do that time in purgatory. So um, we don't know God's mind on all of that, of course, but um, that would be one of the reasons that God would not um, choose to physically heal someone. Again, it's important to keep in mind that this sacrament has the potential and has in the past many times uh, physically healed someone um, of their sickness. Okay, so moving on. 
what is the matter of the sacrament? So um, what's the matter? The matter is the oil. Um, there are three oils. Um, and I can hear you guys, which, what do I need to write down? You need, you need, you should know anything that's in this video is fair game for the quiz. Okay. Or the test, um, which will be, um, next week. I decided today is Tuesday or you'll be watching this on Tuesday. So, but I'll give you time. It'll be next week our last week of school actually. Um, so, um, there are three oils and on Holy Thursday, the Bishop blesses all the oils for the entire diocese and each parish priest, um, goes to that Holy Thursday mass. It didn't happen this year. Um, so I'm not totally sure how he, how, how well, maybe the Bishop did it. And, um, but they didn't have a, a, the typical mass because of the, the virus and everything. So, um, and then they take these three oils back to their parish. And uh, the three oils are the oil of the sick, um, the chrism, sacred chrism, and uh, the oil of catechumen. So this oil, so write this down for the, for the um, anointing of the sick. This is the oil of the sick that is used. So the matter is the oil of the sick. And then um, what is the form? So the form is the words, remember, of the sacrament. And um, it is, this is a little bit long. So again, this is in the book or you can pause this, okay, and rewind it. Through this holy anointing, may the Lord in his love and mercy help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who frees you from sin save you and raise you up. Um, that is what the priest would say as he is anointing. Maybe, I don't know if he'd put his hand up. In the, in the form of blessing, he would be blessing um, with oil and saying that through his holy anointing, may the Lord in his love and mercy help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who frees you from sin, save you and raise you up. So he is, see, he's forgiving, um, forgiving this person of sin. Okay. Who is the minister? The minister is the priest. Um, that is the, um, who gives this, the sacrament is a priest or bishop. Um, and the scripture um, that shows this sacrament, all this, all the sacraments, if you remember, have a scripture that we can look back to and say, this is, um, this is where it is in the Bible. So, uh, James five, James chapter five, verses 14 to 15. Okay. Again, that's James chapter five, verses 14 to 15. I'm going to read it to you with, uh, Sophia's Bible. Thanks, Sophia, for letting me borrow your Bible. Um, okay, don't forget to pick it up. Um, James 5. This is a great verse. Uh, chapter 5, verses 14 to 15. So I don't want you just to know James 5, 14 to 15. I want you to know what it actually says in the scripture, okay? So this is it. Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick man and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. How cool. This is right from the Bible. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Okay. So um, that's the scripture that we uh, take the sacrament from. Okay, so we are on number 10. What is viaticum? Okay, viaticum is one of the most beautiful mercies of the church, okay? The definition of viaticum is provision for the journey. So you're going to write that down, provision for the journey. And what viaticum is, it is the Eucharist. It is actually given as the final, it's given to someone who's dying, okay? And it's, and it's like provisions for the journey is... This um, meal, the last thing they basically are given, and they is this Eucharist provision from taking them from earth to heaven, okay, which is um, so beautiful because this is um, the person receives a plenary indulgence. The priest can give what's called an apostolic pardon at that point and free them from all of their temporal punishment. Um, and um, a lot, a lot about viaticum is really um, amazing in that if a priest is not available, 
um, a lay minister who is a Eucharistic minister or um, something like that, they can go and they can get the Eucharist and they can, um, um, now they can't obviously hear their confession, right? Because that would happen before uh, the priest gives viaticum would be confession. Now, but what they can do is um, they can lead them in an act of contrition. And even if that person has mortal sin on their soul, that minister um, can lead them through an act of contrition, help them to explain to them what perfect contrition is, have perfect contrition for this sin on their soul. And um, they, this person can then receive um, viaticum, the last Eucharist, the last meal, provision for them to get to heaven. So this is the church's way of a great mercy to say, um, let's get this soul to heaven. All right. The canon law says, now I know you guys are like, I know some of you don't listen to this whole video. So I want to make sure that you have not just provision for the journey on Viaticum. I want you to really understand what it is. Okay. That, um, canon law says that uh, the, those who care for, for souls should be zealous and vigilant in giving this last communion. Okay, so what is viaticum? It is the Eucharist that the person, a dying person receives, and it gives them a plenary indulgence. Okay, remember, any of this is fair game on, your, on the quiz, so I hope you're listening to this and taking good notes. All right, so moving on, number 11. So what would happen? Let's say that you have someone in your house who's sick. Um, I know my mom died at home. A lot of people who are um, sick in their final days, they um, are at home. Or Okay, so let's say you're at home or a person's in the hospital, and you call a priest and ask um, your parish priest, could you come and give um, uh, anointing of the sick? What happens at that point? So number 11, what would happen if you called your parish priest because someone at your house or hospital was sick and needed the anointing of the sick, what what would you need to do? And what would he bring with him? Well, he would bring the book of rites so that he would have all the prayers. And um, he would also bring the oil, right? Because you don't have this oil of the sick at your house. Um, and so what would the priest do and say, how would he administer the sacrament? That is your homework. Number 11 is your homework. It is in um, chapter 27. So I want you to write out what would happen so that you have an understanding of, you know, if you ever do need to call a priest to do the, um, to administer the sacrament, you would know what to expect, what would happen, what you would need to do to prepare. Okay. So this is the end. Please upload this um, once you have completed it so that I can see your notes. Okay. All right. Talk to you guys later.